So what he did is he actually leased out an office that was right next to the county um, headquarters where they do the orientations. And um, his his volume like went 10x. Welcome to the Side Hustle Lounge. If you're looking for flexible ways to earn income, grow your mindset, and live the lifestyle you've always dreamed of, you're in the right place. So lower the lights, grab your favorite beverage, and join your host, founder of NotaryCoach.com and Amazon best-selling author of Sign and Thrive, How to Make Six Figures as a Mobile Notary and Loan Signing Agent, Bill Soroka. Cheers, and welcome to my guest today, Helmi Elmengori. He is the president and CEO of Certifix LiveScan, a network of over 600 fingerprint enrollment centers throughout California and Florida. Helmi, thank you so much for being here. It's my pleasure. I have been looking forward to this conversation so much because in my little world of mobile notaries and loan signing agents, we hear about this fingerprinting opportunity. And Certifix LiveScan is a name that I think most of our notaries have heard about because you have such a big footprint in the fingerprint world. Guys, what we're going to be talking about today is exactly what this fingerprinting opportunity is, how it works, why it works, and how you can actually thrive at it. But before we get into that, I want to talk to Helmi a little bit about his origin story. So Helmi, uh, I'm just so curious. I'd like to put a face to a, a company name and your your brand name is known to us, but I want to hear more about the dream that got that company started. When did you decide that you were going to be an entrepreneur? Um, when I was a kid. Yeah. Um, yeah. My dad was a, was a businessman. He was always passionate about business. So he influenced me uh, ah. to do that. Yeah. What kind of business was he in? Um, he was just like in an import export business. Um, he, uh, he's from Egypt, so that's where I'm originally from. Um, and just watching him grow up, watching him travel and um, do his business was really kind of inspirational. I love that. So you had a good influence on it. And did that drive your like education decisions? Did you go to college? And did you go to college for business? Um, I did go to college for business, but much like all uh, immigrants, your parents kind of, you know, pressure you to be a dentist or a doctor. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's kind of how I started at Cal State Fullerton as a biology major. And then my second year, I was just like, yeah, this is not going to work out. I love bio, but I hated chemistry. And I was like, I'm going to switch over to business. How'd that go over? Uh, really well. I, I loved business. I, I loved learning about it. And it was actually in my second year uh, at Cal State Fullerton that I started uh, Certifix Live Scan. I love hearing that. So what triggered that, though? What, how did fingerprinting become an idea for you? So back in uh, 2007, uh, the only people that really offered fingerprinting services was like your local police department. Um, so I walked into one and I, I needed a fingerprinting for, uh, some license that I was getting. And he was like, we're fully booked up for the month. Maybe you could, could try this guy down the street. And he gave me like a flyer. Um, so that's kind of like, I was like, Hmm, interesting. Uh, he just sent me to like some private service provider and this is law enforcement. I thought I was supposed to do it with law enforcement. Yeah. So I, I went into that business and it was just kind of like a small office and um, and he was just providing the fingerprinting service. And an idea was born. And an idea was born. Yeah, I mean, I, I saw that business and I was like, because my whole life I used to think about, you know, different business ideas, uh, really corny ones too, you know. Um, <clears throat> but this one was like the first time I, I went to my mom and I was like, what do you think of this business? And she, Usually, usually she'd reject me, you know, she'd be like, no, you don't want to do that. But this time she was like, yeah, that, that might actually work. It's legit. <laughs> so was this your first business? Yes. Yeah. I started wow. the business at 19 years old. 
Wow. All right. So, and I don't know how old you are now, but how long has Certifix been in business? Since 2007, 2008? Since 2007, I started planning for it in 2006. Um, so it's been about 15 years or so. And when you started, did you just start out as a uh, a solopreneur, just one guy rolling fingerprints? One guy, exactly, just out of a small office in Garden Grove. And um, I remember I was like, so what am I going to do now? You know, I was like, I've got this office. What do I do? Um, so I went to the Garden Grove Police Department <laughs> and I was like, hey, uh, Mr. Police Officer, I, you know, I do fingerprinting and here's some flyers, you know. And um, they just started referring people. Uh, the law enforcement, um, usually they're busy or they're by appointment only. So they like to kind of refer that business out if uh, if someone kind of just like walks into the police department. Right. Well, and especially now these days during COVID, did that have an impact on anything? Uh, COVID had a big impact on our business. Um Because, you know, with fingerprinting, uh, we're actually rolling people's fingerprints. Um, So, you know, there's like a lot of physical close contact between you and the applicant. So definitely at the beginning, people were freaking out. You know, it was like, I don't want to fingerprint anyone. I might catch COVID. (laughs) But then we came up with, um, you know, a certain process to kind of alleviate those concerns. You know, we kind of came up with this, what we call a social distancing live scan. Awesome. Awesome. You always got to find a way. Yeah. To make it work. Um, so you've been in business for 14 years and I'm just curious. I mean, you, you sound, I, it's clear that you're really passionate about this. It sounds like you've got a real positive outlook about things, but over through 14 years of business, has it all been uh, rainbows and unicorns or have there been some trials and tribulations? Yeah, it's it's been a lot of ups and downs. Um, I've literally faced every single challenge you could think of, you know, um, and a lot of good, uh, a lot of good memories, a lot of not so good memories, um, you know, and I kind of, for me, it was all about persistence, just not letting go of that goal of that dream. How did you protect your energy and your mindset and that dream throughout, uh, throughout the years? Um, I, uh, it was a long time that I've been in business. So there was a lot of like different coping mechanisms throughout the years. Um, but I definitely like to take time off on the weekends and, uh, I like to travel, you know, um, I like to stay in close contact with friends and family. Um, And really a lot of that kind of gives you purpose um, and helps to fuel, you know, that goal of you wanting to continue on in the business. Yeah. It sounds like you have a pretty clear why that helps drive you. Do you have, um, is there a particular uh, habit or routine that you could attribute some of your success to? I'm a list maker. I like to All make right. lists. Um, okay. So I'll make a list and I'll constantly, you know, look at this list and I'm like, okay, what should I work on first? And I, um, I've always, you know, that someone once told me about that 80, 20 rule. Yeah. Um, and I've always applied that to my list making, you know, I'll make this big list of everything I need to do. And then I kind of, you know, prioritize that list and decide, okay, this is what I'm going to work on today. Um, and usually in the morning I'll, I'll dedicate my efforts to, you know, the thing that's right on the top of my list. How do you manage distractions? Especially in a business where maybe in the beginning, help me where uh, you were still taking appointment calls and your phone's ringing and dinging and you don't want to miss money, but you also want to move the needle on your business. Uh, To me, it was, um, it was all about providing the best quality service. Um, a lot of times I'd get phone calls that it felt like it wasn't very productive because here I am just dealing with this one customer and I've got all these other customers that I need to service. But somehow I always tried to focus on, on the task at hand. You know, if someone's Mm -hmm. calling me and he's, 
he's frustrated. Uh, I'm not just going to give him the cold shoulder. I'm going to give him my time. I'm going to listen. Um, and I'm just going to take it one step at a time and provide the best possible service that I can to each person that I interact with. Mm, and, I love that. Yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. And and like, you know, in that process, you actually tend to learn a lot more about like the customer profile, you know, um, you know, why they chose you as a provider. Uh, it gives you a lot of valuable feedback. So I think, you know, sticking to the roots is important. Yeah, there is something about being 100% present for the customer in front of you that opens doors that a lot of people um, or a lot of opportunities that other people miss because they're thinking too transactionally and their head's somewhere else. Mm -hmm. The um, I know there's going to be many of us that are listening that don't fully understand uh, the fingerprint opportunity. So can you share with us what this looks like? Like for somebody like me, who's looking for a business, why is fingerprinting a good decision? Um, fingerprinting is a value added service. So it's something that you add on to your existing business. Um, so it's a service that you can offer that can generate additional revenue for your business. What kind of businesses work well in this? Um, so in the beginning, it was just fingerprint rollers. You know, we had our own little offices and that's what we did. Um, and kind of like the story of how I got started um, in Certifix is I actually, you know, um, I was looking for, you know, how can I make this more efficient? Uh, because, you know, opening up an office, you know, there's a lot of uh, overhead costs. So I started looking at uh, partnerships, you know, and just partnering with other businesses. Mm. And uh, that worked out well. So now what we do is we're specialized in, you know, giving businesses the fingerprinting equipment. And then in turn, um, we do the marketing. We help to drive the business in, in to them. And then they actually they do the actual fingerprinting. So that for me was a good formula. It's kind of like teaming up with other businesses. Yeah, then you both have skin in the game and invested in each other's success. Exactly. Yep. So I think there's probably people listening right now that think, well, do enough people need to get fingerprinted to use this business? What's your experience there? Who who needs fingerprinting services? There, It's a huge list. I mean, in, in California alone, there's 12,000 different application types that require <laughs> fingerprinting. And, wow. um, you know, a few years ago, it was like, you know, 2 million people every year that need fingerprinting in California. Um, and that number is constantly growing every year. There's always some new law or, uh, or legislation that requires a certain license or type of profession to get fingerprinting. It blew my mind when I heard that, I think, is it teachers, attorneys, doctors, all of them have to be fingerprinted. Is it annually or every two years or something like that in California, too? Um, it varies by application type. Um, but, you know, generally it's, um, once, you know, when they, when they get their initial license, okay. um, and sometimes if it's, you know, if it's a teacher and if, if they're moving from one district to the next, each district will require them to do fingerprinting again. Um, so the funny thing about the fingerprinting business is that, you know, the fingerprint results can't be shared between different, like licensing agencies or employers right so that school just that that teacher might be working for district a and if she wants to work for district b she has to get another fingerprint scan oh wow so a hassle for them but a huge opportunity for people in this business exactly anytime anyone's getting a new license a new job um you know new employer they're always having to go through that fingerprinting process again so what is that like a day in the life of a fingerprint roller look like? What's the actual work like? Um, so the most important thing is fielding phone calls, you know, and being friendly over the phone. Hmm. Um, you know, if and, and answering their questions, being knowledgeable. And, you know, once you've answered the phone, people actually start to come into your business to do the fingerprinting. Uh, and they feel, you know, safe knowing that you're knowledgeable and you're going to take, you know, a good quality uh, fingerprint and you're going to collect all the information accurately and submit it to the state. 
So a lot of it is just, you know, answering the phone, being there for the applicant, uh, and then um, being available, you know, during business hours to these people that are scheduling appointments and they're walking in to get their fingerprints done. Do would an operator have to have a physical location or can this be done mobile as well? Uh, it could be done either at a physical walk-in location or mobile. So as an example, um, the, the fingerprinting equipment that we have is it's, it's basically just a laptop and a fingerprint scanner. Mm. Um, so they can have that in their office. And if someone contacts them and wants them to go and fingerprint people at, a, at, a, at an event or to fingerprint an executive, they could actually take the equipment out of their office or their home office and, and take it out uh, and do a mobile uh, live scan fingerprint. I think that's why this has been so attractive to so many from my community. The mobile notary and loan signing agent community has really embraced this fingerprint opportunity because of that mobile component. Mm -hmm. What does it, um, what's it take to get started in a business like this? Um, To get started, it, it varies by state, but generally you have to get approval from the state. Um, you, you also have to find out if your state accepts, uh, you know, digital fingerprinting or if they're still going through the traditional ink card fingerprinting. Um, so in California, as an example, you have to get like state approval. So there's an, a certain application process that you have to go through to get approved. And then once you're approved, then you go back to a live scan vendor who then sells you the equipment um, that you could uh, that you can use for offering the service. And can that be done? So is, and I remember hearing a, a similar interview where we were talking about open and closed states. Is that what you're talking about here? Yeah, there's there's certain states that are closed. Um, so like Texas uh, and New York, for example, are closed states. So they work with like one giant fingerprint company. Um, okay. And there's other states that are open like California and Florida. So if somebody was looking to start a, a venture, whether side hustle or a full on business with this, they'd have to make sure that their state was open. Yeah, that's the number one thing, If especially if it's a live scan state, um, they have to check if the state is open to doing that. Um, but the good news is that there's a lot of states that still accept ink fingerprint cards. Yeah. So you could still offer the service, um, you know, and, and give the cards back to the applicants. What is the difference between ink and live scan? So ink is the, the traditional way of, of fingerprinting. It's something that's been around since the 1800s, you know, mm-hmm. early 1900s. Um, and um, it was only in like the 1990s that we actually started this live scan process. Um, the difference is ink is just like ink and paper. Um, and you're mailing it to the law enforcement, whereas live scan, you're scanning the fingerprints on a fingerprint scanner, and you're then sending that to uh, the law enforcement electronically. Super simple, but not every state does the live scan part or the digital fingerprints. Yeah, not every state does it, but a lot of states have invested in in that because there's you know there's clear benefits, you know, uh, speed of processing, less yeah. manual processing. On the state's part, you know, they don't have to scan all these cards and, and store them. Is there a trade off in quality of fingerprints? Is it like is, is digital higher quality than the old fashioned ink or is it pretty comparable? Um, well, the benefits to a live scan system is that it'll actually provide you with feedback. So it'll tell you, you know, this print is good or this print is bad. So we have like a color grading system, green, yellow, red. Um mm. So we kind of give you feedback as to whether that print will be accepted by the state or not. And what about training? Like, how does somebody learn how to do this? Is that something that uh, LiveScan teaches or Certifix teaches or do they are there independent trainings? So um, fingerprinting is something that, um, you know, a lot of our operators um, are trained remotely. So we'll actually do like a Zoom session with them and we'll we'll train them remotely uh, and, you know, we'll give them feedback. But really, like in this business, uh, a lot of people learn by doing. Yeah. All right. So, you know, they they get these people coming in and, and they kind of just learn and they build up that knowledge and and that technique over time. But we do give them a lot of guidance on that. Love that. 
It sounds like you could be practicing a lot with your uh, friends and neighbors too, right? Yeah, you could practice on your friends, your neighbors, your family. Um, so like a live scan system has practice mode. So you can practice all you want until you're ready oh, cool. to actually do a real transaction. Is there is there any risk of liability for the actual operator? Like, are they responsible um, for the quality of that fingerprint? Um, yeah, there's, um, so the state will actually grade you. So in California, they have um, a system that will actually uh, look at the fingerprint image. Mm -hmm. And um, they'll, they'll grade the quality. So if it's a, if it's a bad scan, uh, they have a system called APHIS that will automatically drop that, that fingerprint into a manual queue for review. Um, and every time, um, you know, a fingerprint transaction drops that counts against the operator. So incentive to really take this seriously and learn how to do it right. Yeah, like, uh, you know, in this business, it's all about accuracy of data entry and good fingerprint quality. Mm. If you can do those two things right, then it's, you know, and, and that's the same thing with, no, with the notary business, right? I mean, you have right. to have uh, good documentation. You have to follow the exact process. The same thing with live scan. Yeah, another reason it's such a good fit. So you mentioned uh, earlier that this is kind of an add-on business. Do you see in your experience, are there people who only do fingerprinting? Can they build a business and a lifestyle doing this? Um, the vast majority of people do it as kind of like an add-on service. Okay. Um, but some people actually, you know, make it full-time and it just depends on their ability to to drum up the business. You know, you can have um, a certain contract and you can make it a full-time job. So it just depends on um, the business that you have and the business that you're able to generate. Well, let's talk about that. How do you generate business doing this? So um, that was the question that I asked myself 14 years ago. Yeah. And um, there's, there's really like... Um, several ways to get the business. Um, one way is to just to have a good online presence. Mm. Um, so uh, as an example, uh, I started investing into the Certifix website um, and to, you know, I started doing paid advertising and um, I started doing search engine optimization and, and really, you know, building up that site and getting people to visit that site. Um, and to me, that was the easiest, um, more, it was the most clear way for me for how I could get business, um, yeah. you know, uh, to get people to kind of to walk into my fingerprinting site. So SEO and paid advertising, I love that you're even talking about this because I'm passionate about the power of search engine optimization. It helped drive traffic. Where do you, um, or did that stimulate some of these larger contracts as well with these organizations that have, you know, hundreds or thousands of employees or contractors that need fingerprinting? Or do you do something else to make those, that level of connection? So, so to me, it was, I was always the outsider coming in. Um, there was always these, you know, there were always bigger companies that had these state contracts, you know? And mm. you felt that you couldn't really compete with them. Um, so I kind of focused on the online marketing side. And um, as we focused on the online marketing, um, we got the leads, you know, slowly but surely they came in. And sometimes it was um, certain accounts that we thought were, were good. So we'd set up billing services for them. And then we'd treat them just like we would any other applicant, you know, give them good quality service, uh, be attentive to their needs. Uh, so that's how we were able to start to build kind of like, I wouldn't call them big contracts, but smaller regional contracts. Yeah. Yeah. And so once you, if you lay the foundation for a relationship that could last beyond that one appointment, uh, do you find that you get lots of repeat business? D definitely. Because if you're, if you're providing a good service, um, whoever used you is going to recommend you to someone else, or most importantly, they're going to recommend you to their employer. And um, mm. that to me is uh, a big way, you know, of, of getting bigger accounts. Yeah. Treat them right. And then they refer you to the big boss that makes decisions for everybody. 
I love that. Exactly. What, um, at what point do you think, or is it possible to, to grow a team uh, in a business like this? It's, it's definitely possible to grow a team. I mean, that's what I did. Um, as you get those, you know, larger events, you could, you could hire someone that could do the fingerprinting for you. Um, so, you know, if you have a large uh, recurring mobile event, you can get a series of mobile operators uh, that can work for you. Or if you have an office, uh, you can train someone to kind of uh, manage those walk-ins or those appointments as they come in. Beautiful. And as far as an initial investment, what can people count on if they're interested in doing, let's break it out for people too. If they want to do a, a live scan experience versus ink, what are the, um, this ballpark startup cost? So with the ink, um, it, it could be a very low startup cost if you're just buying an ink pad and, and, you know, the FBI 258 cards, right? That's mm. the lowest possible cost to getting into the business. Um, and then, you know, they have, you know, different types of uh, fingerprint um, pads that you can buy some small, you know, you've seen those notary stamps, right? Or those notary pads, they're like tiny. Um, so th those comes in all shapes and sizes. So you can get bigger ones with more ink that, that can actually be used to offer the service. And um, there's, uh, there's also uh, fingerprint card holders that you can buy as well that kind of make it easier to keep that card in place on the table. Okay. Um, and then there's more uh, advanced stuff. We just came out with a system where you could actually uh, do uh, live scanning and then you can print on the fingerprint card using a Lexmark printer. Um, so there's more investment in that. You have to get a laptop, you have to get the fingerprint scanner, you have to get the Lexmark printer. Uh, but once you've got that, you can actually uh, scan the fingerprints, type in all the information, and then print it onto the fingerprint card. Um, and what that does is it eliminates all the, you know, the ink and paper and all the mess. So if they chose to use that, that would basically be ink fingerprinting available in all 50 states, but you're still doing it with, a, in, with the digital tools. Exactly. You're using the light wow. scan software to scan the fingerprints, and then you're printing it onto a fingerprint card. Well, oh, that's huge. Great idea. Yeah, we just and, came out with it maybe uh, about a month and a half ago. We announced it to our California sites. Can you, can Certifix LifeScan, can they make that available to uh, entrepreneurs in all 50 states? Or are you limiting that technology to just uh, California and Florida right now? That that print to card technology is available in all 50 states. So as long as your state accepts ink fingerprint cards, or even if you have an applicant that needs some fingerprinting for some federal job, like through the IRS, or they need to submit for an FBI background check, um, they can use these ink fingerprint cards. So what's what's somebody looking at to start up if they wanted that technology? Um, good question. So uh, let me tell you here. Okay. So usually it's uh, a laptop, uh, you know, we'll sell them a Lenovo laptop. It's about 650 And then it, it just depends on the fingerprint scanner that they that they go for. So we give them like a menu of different options of fingerprint scanners to choose. Um, so the scanners can range anywhere between $1,200 to $4,000 uh, on okay. the high end. Right? So there's lower level scanners that are more affordable and then there's higher level scanners that are more used by like law the law enforcement. Excellent. So somewhere between two and six thousand dollars probably to get started with the live scan equipment. Yeah. And then um in addition to that they'd they'd get like a Lexmark printer uh if mm -hmm. they wanted to do the print card. Um and then there's um and then we as a company, we charge, uh, you know, so there's a software license fee, there's software maintenance, um, and we're available, you know, whenever they need us so they can call us and we're always available to, to help to maintain that system. Yeah, Helmy, I, I'll tell you, I, I love your reputation for customer service. Uh, that's one thing consistently through the years, you know, as I've been talking to notaries around the country, that 
actually do this with Certifix LiveScan. They swear by your customer service and your availability and support. So well done on that. And I think that is of critical importance, especially when you're starting out with a new business. you got to have somebody who can kind of walk you through stuff. Um, can you... Can you give us, like, if I was trying to calculate my return on investment here and I was going to go all in uh, with this, even if I'm in this closed state, let's say, I'm in a closed state, I can't use the digital fingerprints, but I still want this technology to print out the the ink prints. What's a a typical appointment? um, What's the revenue in that look like? Can you ballpark that or does that vary too much? Well, um, when I started the business, uh, the, you know, the standard fee was $20 is what you would charge. Um, and, you know, in the last, you know, 14 years, that's that's gone up. So now they're char- they're charging about $40 for offering the service. Okay. And um, depending on the state, there's additional government fees that they're collecting because the state themselves, they, they have a fee to run the background check or the FBI has a fee to run that FBI background check. I got it. So the operator would just pass that on to the uh, customer. So they have their fee, say 40 bucks, plus whatever the government fees are for processing all of that. They would collect that up front. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm assuming that if we started tying in a a mobile component, you know, the the fee for the convenience of coming to your office or your home uh, might justify higher fees too. Would that be correct? De- definitely yeah there's um there's a there's always there's always a travel fee that you can charge um uh, you know forty dollars is the rate that they would pay if they were to walk into your office but in addition to that if you're offering them that added convenience of going out to them you could definitely charge an additional service fee or travel fee are these state mandated fees at all or is it just m- whatever the market will bear Whatever the market will bear. So uh, there's no cap on these fees. So you could charge whatever you want. I mean, sometimes, you know, we'll get, uh, you know, executives that need it like in a few hours. And sometimes they even want us to fly out, you know, and um, we'll do it for, you know, the right price. (laughs) Right. And you get to decide what that price is, right? And we and and we decide what the price is. Yep. I'm curious about that just sparked a, a question about um, jurisdiction. Um, when you're, so you get all approved, is there anything that says you can only take fingerprint in the state you're based in or can you be in multiple states? Uh, so good question. And in California, they, they, if you're doing a California live scan, they require that you keep that live scan system in California unless you have special approval from the state. Um, okay. but in other states, they're more lenient and they, they'll allow you, um, to fingerprint outside of the state. One, one example is Florida. You know, we, um, we have one provider in Illinois that gets more Florida requests than they do Illinois requests. Interesting. And so that Florida has the flexibility. So I guess it's just state by state, which we're used to even in the notary world. So do you have uh just out of the t- off the top of your head do you have a an interesting story about somebody who really thought outside the box and found a creative way to either build a relationship or find customers that changed everything for their business? Definitely yeah there's this gentleman in um in a city um and you know in, in California we have um IHSS which is like in-home service providers and uh, they go through these orientations, you know, that are run by the county. Um, so what he did is he actually leased out an office that was right next to the county um, headquarters where they do the orientations. And um, his his volume like went ten x uh, when he did. It. He put these big signs outside, you know, like live scan fingerprinting, and and people just started walking in. Um, so that to me, he was a standout for doing that. I commend that. Yeah, no kidding. That is well thought out. I love that. Well, they go in there for orientation and it says, oh, hey, go get your fingerprints. And then they walk out the door and there he is. And there he is. Yeah, (laughs) that's brilliant. I love it. I love it. On the other side of this, uh, and this is a question I like to ask when it comes to opportunities uh, like this is in your experience, who 
fails at this business? Um, the, the the number one reason for failing at the business is, um, at least in California, where there's all these government fees that they're collecting, um, they're not turning around and paying it to the state. So if the state doesn't get their fees, uh, naturally, they're going to disconnect your account and you lose your business. So that's the number one way to, to for the people that I've seen that lost it. That's that's how it happened. What do you think um, that's all about? Is it is it integrity issue or is it just cash management issue? Uh, I think it's cash management. I think people just uh, they go into the business with with good intentions, and you know they receive all these government fees, and they're not maybe separating the fees, so they end up spending the money, and then they don't have the money to pay the state. So it's kind of like this vicious cycle that they get into, uh, and then they lose their license because of it. Yeah. Um, what? Uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. What were you going to say? So, and the other reason is um, the, um, you know, data entry errors, you know, they're not typing in the, the data accurately or um, the fingerprint quality is not good. You know, they're taking bad quality fingerprint scans. Eventually that will catch up to you, whether it's just, you know, disgruntled um, applicants that have to come in for a resubmission or, um, or the state just says, you know what, you're just you're not taking good quality prints and we're going to have to disconnect your device. Yeah, that would be, that would be disappointing for sure. Um, you know, I'm a, I'm a subscriber of the Japanese philosophy of Kaizen, that constant continuous improvement. And I do, I personally, uh, and I advocate that every appointment can be used to get better and more efficient at our appointments. So you, in, this case with fingerprinting, we're investing two two thousand to six thousand dollars, maybe in this. What resources are there to constantly learn and improve in this? Do you are there some industry resources or certifics re- resources that people should know about? Um, when I when I started the business, there wasn't many resources, and until today, there isn't many resources. Uh, your only re- real resource, I'd say, is your live scan vendor. You know, that, you know, with us, you can call us anytime. You've got people that have a lot of ex- experience in dealing with this. So they can answer your questions or they can remotely log into your life scan system um, to kind of give you some guidance as you're going through the transaction. Um, so that's kind of like what we do to help uh, guide them and give them uh, that feedback on on the quality of their operation. Mm, powerful. Now. We, I kind of went off on uh, focusing on the uh, the ink fingerprinting and the startup cost for that. And I just want to circle back to make sure uh, that we talk about the digital side too. Is the startup cost, because it's similar equipment or the same equipment, is it the same uh, startup investment if they happen to be in an open, live scan friendly state? Yeah, it's it's about the same cost. Um the main the main price difference is the printer. You know, if they're if they're in an open state and they have a live scan system and they want to do um, the printer card, they just have to add on the cost of the printer to do that. Ballpark printer, just a standard Lexmark printer, or yeah, like a, it uh, it's a it's a specific model that uh, is FBI certified. Um, okay, got it. And that model goes about for about five hundred dollars or so. Okay. Excellent. Now, if people are listening and they want to work with Helmi and Certifix, where can you help them? Well, the the best the best thing to do is to visit our website and to uh, you know submit the form that you're interested in the live scan system, and um, we have people that will reach out to you. Um, if you don't hear from us, just contact us, and we'll try to work with you and uh, and mention Bill Soroka and uh, Helmi and. They'll take care of you. Yeah, awesome. And I'll, I'll make sure that we have you all set up with links inside the VIP room at SideHustleLounge.com as well. Now, I just want to clarify, we'll do our best to clarify here on the podcast, is if uh, when it comes to digital fingerprints using the Certifix live, sen- live scan system, it's only two states. Is that correct? Right now, yes. There's only two states that we do the live scan systems in, um, but we're you know we're coming up with uh, a second generation product that will be available in, in more states after that. Awesome. Um, 
but if you're in a state where it's open and they do live scan, um, uh, contact us anyway, and we'll try to kind of um, point you in the right direction. Beautiful. And then, of course, if they want to do the ink fingerprints using the technology, what if they they don't want to do the printing uh, or using the technology? Can Certifix help get people set up for rolling ink fingerprints in all 50 states? Yeah, we can we can help in doing the ink fingerprinting um, through live scan in all 50 states. All right. Well, Helmi, this has uh, expanded my horizons for sure. Uh, I'm pretty sure I've been looking for an excuse not to do this business for years and I can't find one. So I'm pretty sure that I'm going to be one of your operators or one of your fingerprint rollers here pretty quick. And I'm excited uh, to finally get a chance to talk to you about that. And I look forward to working with you and your company as well. And for those of you that are listening, if you'd like to jump in and explore even more, we have additional resources for you inside the VIP room at SideHustleLounge.com. Helmy, thanks again for being here. Truly appreciate it. Thank you. It was my pleasure. 